Hey guys, all right, so uh, today I want to do a video on expeditions. Uh, what you're seeing in the background is the recording of my final game uh, of the expedition I showed you earlier in the week. All right, so today we're going to be talking about expeditions and uh, really all the stuff you should know when you're doing an expedition. Uh, <laughs> the first thing um, that you're obviously going to want to think about is your drafting deck. Oh, the deck you're drafting is going to be the deck you use for the rest of the expedition, and you, throughout the um, expedition, get to add and replace cards from your deck. Um, so the entire time, you're trying to get the best deck you can. Um, so the thing you want to be thinking about when you're first uh, building your expedition deck and choosing cards for that is what regions you want to be in. The first pick, you'll get a choice from three different champions, and each one will belong to that region. Um, obviously, uh, you want to be thinking about what cards you're getting and what rares you might have or want for your deck. Um, and what I mean by rares is like what rarity of the card it is. You know, you're going to want more epics, uh, than commons, probably. Uh, that's probably the, um, the way you're going to be thinking about it. But you also kind of want to think about, uh, whether do I take the common or not? Because you're more often going to get common cards and you are epic cards. Um, getting a little ahead of myself here. Uh, but when you're first picking your your first cards, um, you're want to think about the champion in the region. You're not going to want to be thinking about the other cards because those won't matter as much. Uh, you want to be thinking about what champion you want to play and what um, regions or champions are going to be the strongest. So to see, in this game, the first champion I picked um, was Hecarim. And I picked him because he's a super strong top end. He is a 6-mana 5-5 five five that summons two two twos uh, when he attacks, uh, which is so strong. And overall, the, the strategy is really strong. And then the second region I picked was Frelord because uh, Frelord has a lot of big dudes and a lot of interaction. So that's what you want to be thinking of. I picked Hecarim because he was a super strong card. And um, Frelord... Combos really well with Shadow Isles when it comes to, like, the death things and all that. Um, and Fredward itself is probably one of the strongest regions for expeditions. Um, Fredward, the reason why it's so strong, um, it's also up there with Demacia is because, um, especially before the balance update, the way to win expeditions was to have the strongest board and just overpower your opponents. Like, there was not a lot of... Uh, other things you really need, wanted to be thinking about. You didn't want a lot of removal or a combo deck. Those usually do really poorly in expeditions because you can't craft the perfect deck and get all the pieces you need. So you really just want to go wide and have a large board, which is why my deck in, during this expedition did so well. I had Fredlord. I was you know filling up the board with a lot of do, uh, cheap dudes. Um, I also had a little bit of a combo with... Um, Curse Keeper, and a couple of the cards that could pop him really well. And Curse Keeper, uh, although that seems like, why would you be playing that combo? Well, Curse Keeper, even if you can, you know, just pop him off once, or, um, yeah, if you can just pop him off, he's a super strong tempo card, and really good at filling up the board. And, you know, <laughs> given my strategy, it made perfect sense to be playing that. I got a couple of uh, Caretakers, uh, so I was able to not only have the uh, Curse Keeper combo, but also combos for Kalista, who was a champion in my deck. So um, those are some things to think about um, when you're taking picks or replacing cards in your deck. Um, so regions, first of all, is the most important thing. You want to make sure you're in the right regions. Um, Fredlord is really strong. Bilgewater got a whole lot stronger with this balance update. Uh, Fredlord and Shadow Isles are probably the ones that got the best um, update, the best new cards um, for the region, in my opinion. And so definitely pairing those with um, uh, each other or another region like Demacia, Fredlord would be really good. Now, Ionia is a little weaker. It did get a couple tools, um, but it's weaker because its uh, units are usually smaller than you want your units to be, and they don't have a lot of great top ends. You usually can't rush people really well because your deck is not going to be covering the low CMC. You don't get to pick the perfect cards. 
And so you want to have a range of CMC so that you can always curve out, have a late game, and you know, stay alive early game, have a good late game, and Ionia doesn't do that very well. Um, another region that I wouldn't suggest playing is PNZ. Now, you obviously can, and I've seen a lot of decks work um, when you're doing a spell slinger strategy and going heavy on the control side, but it's like... If your opponent's playing huge minions, it's going to be really hard to stop them from, you know, by killing those minions when you're in a region like PNZ. You usually rely on being aggressive uh, if you're in PNZ or having some extremely good toppings. And in Expeditions, you just don't have either of those. Um, if you're combing PNZ, the only thing about PNZ, and maybe even Ionia, is I would combo it with... Um, Shadow Isles. Now, that might seem weird because Freylord and Damasia are like have all the big units, right? Well, um, yes, but Shadow Isles has a good selection of decent units. Um, definitely, I would say it has not as good top ends, but it has a lot. You know, you have Ledros, which you could get. You have a ton of good cheap dudes, but the real important thing is you have removal. You have vengeance which just outright kills a minion which was a super strong card for this run i'll just say the combination of having huge creatures from Freylord and having good removal and interaction um in <laughs> if they who endure as well uh, as you can see that made this game a whole lot better um because it just is so big um and so i would stick with those regions having big creatures or big removal uh and that Kind of leads into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is um, making sure that you have really big creatures. Now, I know I just said this, but cards like Dehunder, Ledros, um, uh, Sejuani, uh, Reptide Rex, um, what are some other ones? Um, pff, there's a lot of other ones. I can't think of my, uh, all of them off the top of my head. Hecarim. Um, any big dudes that you can play that your opponent has a hard time removing with damage removal, like um, Grasp, uh, Mystic Shot, um, uh, let's see, Gotcha, Get Excited, all those things. Having creatures that are outside their range so they have to use two spells to kill it, or even three, is going to be really powerful. Um, and you usually want to be playing big creatures like that as well, so top, to, <laughs> to stop your opponent's big creatures. You know, because your opponent's going to be playing big creatures. And so it's all about having the bigger board, which is why they who endure so powerful. It's a six mana, but it can get huge late game. It was like a 1919 in one of my games. I don't remember which. But, like, and it's so hard to remove. Um, the, uh, the flip of that is having removal. Um, now, I don't, you know, you don't want removal like glimpse or anything. You want removal really from Shadow Isles. You want vengeance and you want ruination. That can either stop your opponent's board entirely, and like, um, which is the basically the same as having a huge board yourself. You, um, you basically make your opponent's board worse than you, and you win. Or you have vengeance to stop their huge creature, and your huge creature can now hit through, and win you the game basically, which is so important. Um, if you're not playing in Shadow Isles, uh, having cards like um, Single Combat or Judgment. From Demacia are also very good removal for your opponent's big creatures, and they keep your big creatures alive and sort of rely on you having big creatures as well. Um, if you're playing a Frail Lord, uh, having Flash Freeze, um, even just like um, some buff spells like uh, Take Heart um, can be huge for you because you make your dude bigger than your opponent's dude and you win the combat. So combat tricks are huge if you can use them in the right situation. But before you play combat tricks, you really need to have the creatures. Um, so the thing I would say is make sure you have a good set of creatures and maybe add some uh, interaction. Interaction has been become more common with the balance updates, so you don't have to be looking for that as much. Uh, if you're playing PNZ, I would definitely not play Mystic Shot anymore. Maybe one or two copies, but the rule of thumb used to be take Mystic Shot whenever you saw it. But I think that that has sort of changed because a lot of the, the balance update has made a lot of regions have bigger creatures, more top ends, and a lot more interaction. So Mystic Shot got a whole lot worse, uh, which makes regions like Shadow Isles and Bilgewater shine more. And so I'd definitely be playing that. Uh, 
in with Mystic Shot, you also have cards like that. So Gotcha I would probably play. Uh, not because of the cost reduction, but because it can kill things uh, that are out of the range of um, Mystic Shot. So it can kill a lot of the new tools that decks have been getting. Now, uh, the reason I say that, um, even though there are a lot of things that Mystic Shot can still kill, uh, you just... there. A lot of things have gone out of that range, and it just doesn't matter so much anymore because we have so many more top ends. You really want to be fighting for the board rather than removing your opponent's stuff. Um, and the last thing I want to say is make sure you have a good curve. Don't ignore your early game. You want to have a ton of early game cards, which is why Keeper is so powerful. It gives you such good board, uh, such a good board in the early game and keeps you from losing early on. Um which is huge because it means your top ends are going to come out more often. That's why I played multiple Keepers. Keeper was just such a powerful card. Um, there's a lot of cards in Demacia and Bilgewater that have a similar effect to this. Um, let's see. <laughs> you have a lot of great cards in those two regions for early game. You even got Black Market Merchant, which I think is a powerhouse. Um... And I, <laughs> I don't know, I really think that card's way too good. Um, with that, guys, I think I'm just going to end this video. Um, I think I hit all the main things you need to be focusing on. Uh, anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video.